Okay, we have one more company in this batch to start a battlefield, but we'll be back tomorrow with two more sessions, one first thing in the morning and the other one right after lunch. So I hope to see you back then. But before then, we're going to bring out from Toronto, Canada, Magnastar. Presenting for Magnastar, it's Jacqueline Good. Give her a round of applause. Hello, my name is Jacqueline Good. Outside of building amazing space spectrum simulation technology, you can find me sailing and training for space. Hello, thank you so much for having me today. My name is Jacqueline Good. I'm the founder and CEO of Magnastar. I'm here with my demo, Danny. Thank you so much. We are thrilled to be introducing Magnastar and the 247X platform. 247X conducts spectrum simulations and coordination infrastructure to bring relief to the space sector. Welcome to space. Many of the services that we rely on here on Earth, from Earth observation to financial systems to GPS navigation, as well as telecommunications, relies on space infrastructure. These are radio communications conducting signal communications between Earth and space. As we go from 8,000 satellites to over 100,000 satellites in space, the issue that we're facing is that it's becoming much noisier. It's the spectrum noise and the consistency of communication that Magnastar is addressing. When we dove into this problem, we understood that the current process that satellite operators are going through in order to obtain spectrum, coordinate spectrum, as well as protect their spectrum rights, are quite outdated, and using technology that's 25 years old for the legacy space industry rather than infrastructure for the modern space sector. This is immensely important because without clear communications, the entire space sector becomes in jeopardy. We need to establish clear communications on a regular basis, and Magnastar is tackling this challenge. We tackle this challenge through easing the complexities of space spectrum. We simulate how multiple satellites, when they will be in a collinear event and potentially interfere with one another from their signal communications in between Earth and space. We embed that simulation technology into coordination infrastructure in order to expedite the process of how satellite operators work together in the space ecosystem. When we were first building this, we connected with a satellite operator who told us they had just received their allocation of spectrum and received 70 letters from different operators saying that they were going to interfere. They then had to go to each one of these different operators and prove to them that they would not interfere with them, costing them millions of dollars in the process. Magnastar has understood this process, embedded it within the technology workflow that we have built to automate portions of that process, expediting how satellite operators coordinate, protecting their spectrum rights, and monitoring in near real time to ensure consistent communications between Earth and space. In doing so, you can think of us as your one-stop shop for all spectrum management. We build in a safety net for all satellite operators as well as for regulators to understand new spectrum filings coming out every two weeks from the International Telecommunications Union, we simulate how those new constellations, as well as how existing constellations, will interfere with one another, and we establish clear pathways of communications for existing satellite operators between Earth and space, between different operators together, as well as between the operator and the regulator. Let's move to demo. You can see here within the Magnastar platform, this is a software platform, where immediately I have notifications of what's occurring within the spectrum market today. I have all the new filings that have been released from the International Telecommunications Union over the last two weeks. The system has automatically run whether or not they will cause simulations or si signal interference to my existing constellation. It has flagged two new filings that are needing my attention, and it also has flagged an existing coordination agreement I have in place where there's been a modification to that filing. This would typically be done by specific engineers and PhDs going through the filings, understanding, writing letters back and forth, running simulations that can take up to a week to run and 24 hours to get a result, which we have all embedded within one software application. Within our interference forecast, we have specifically here all the coordinations that an individual operator is currently working through. 
I can go ahead and run multiple simulations at a time, which is currently non-existent within the existing technology. And as I go to work a new uh, interference calculation, I can put in my specific parameters. I can run if I want it to be an uplink interference assessment or a downlink interference assessment or an intersatellite interference assessment. Again, doing this for both real time, as in I'm going to make a connection to my satellite in the next 10 minutes, what's my likelihood of being interfered with? or for long-term coordination agreements over the next two years, what is the likelihood that these two satellites or these two constellations will interfere with each other more than the thresholds put in place by the regulators or the International Telecommunications Union. I can go through and create this specific simulation forecast. In selecting specific forecasts, I can see either a pass or a fail. So as I go through to select, I select a given interference, and here I have a fail meaning that it exceeds the given thresholds put in place by the regulators, and this would cause interference. Historically, when this has been done, it's the satellite operators noticing an outage or noticing an interference after it occurs, setting off a month worth of due diligence on why that occurred. In this case, we're requesting more information directly within this operator-operator sandbox and completing the coordination. If we decide to complete, we send directly to the regulator, and it signals off and completes the workflow. Moving back to the presentation, in doing so, we have built a semi-autonomous enterprise signal system. This signal system, the reason why we have gained such traction with it, we have 11 geostationary operators, 14 non-geostationary operators, and eight government organizations, military regulators, international bodies, who we achieved alignment with on our approach in developing this technology, receiving multiple letters of intent, multiple operators who have now pre-purchased and pre-paid to get early access to this technology, and won a military contract. These are our differentiators on why we are unique for both internal and external use. Critically, we are building this to be a spectrum exchange. This spectrum exchange can only come to fruition as we have validated that it will not cause interference as we're subleasing spectrum and the coordination agreements are still being adhered to. We are also building this directly within the community. I am a Canadian delegate of the International Telecommunications Union under the United Nations. We are moving forward for this to be the new standard for all satellite operators and regulators. More than happy to answer questions on how we make money and our team as well. Okay. With that, in signing this QR code, we are onboarding operators into our early adopter program over the next few weeks. We have four signed up already who have prepaid Gotta to be a part of this there. program. Get your operators on board. That was good. Way to wrap it up. <laughs> and if we can acknowledge, that was five out of five on demos, right? That was five amazing. Five. That was yeah. very good. Even a satellite company. Well, thank you very much. Okay, Tess, let's start with you. Great job, Jacqueline. Nice to see you. And exciting progress. Thank you. You mentioned the ITU a few times. Um, sorry, I don't like to use acronyms. International Telecommunications Union. Thank you. Why aren't they doing this themselves? They're the ones given the world the various spectrum and, and has the most to lose when it interferes, let's say, with critical infrastructure like GPS. Why, why are they not building this? Absolutely. So we have been in communication with the International Telecommunications Union as we are delegates under their, under their membership. With that, the reason why is because they are so strapped for resources and so focused on just maintaining the regulations, allocating the spectrum already, that when it comes to them requesting coordination agreements to be completed, they are actively looking for new tools to conduct the simulations and automate portions of the coordination experience for all satellite operators and regulators around the world. So we are actually working with them in developing this technology to be the new standard for all operators and regulators to ensure clear pathways of communications moving forward. Ooh, does this mean you could have a regulatory moat if they ubiquitously certify Magnastar as the, the exchange, the spectrum exchange? Absolutely. So the regulatory moat is what we are establishing and what we've been positioning ourselves with, both with the ITU, Buzzword. with the International Telecommunications Union, as well as multiple regulators around the world. That made Healy smile. Ooh, I got goosebumps. So let's talk about uh -huh. that. Let's go to him. <laughs> oh, I was actually going to ask you about, are there any secondary benefits? So like... Um, I know security is a big concern in space. When you're doing these encodings, is there like interception prevention? Are there kind of like secondary and tertiary benefits that come out of this? Absolutely. So one of the benefits is identifying greenfield opportunities. 
So greenfield opportunities as in where is nobody else downlinking currently, where mm -hmm. there's available space for you to be connecting and better utilizing your capacity. So that's one of them. The other one that we see being quite prevalent with our operators is market access. Mm -hmm. We're looking at codifying all the different regulations that go into entering different countries. A lot of folks try to enter countries without realizing the regulations that have been put in place in order to enter that country and operate in that country. And we're codifying those directly within the solution to make it simpler so that satellite operators can be more decisive on the markets that they enter next. That's great. Mark? Yeah, I was going to let you speak a bit to the business model. So how do you make money? <laughs> Absolutely. So we've established a business model that has three different avenues of revenue today. One is our early adopter model. An early adopter, low barrier to entry, they pay a monthly fee and then we charge per simulation. The second is our enterprise edition. So unlimited simulations, unlimited access. And the third is by taking a percentage of the spectrum leased. Gotcha. And how large do you think that business could be five years from now? What would be a great number in terms of revenue? Ooh. In the United States alone, there has been over $250 billion spent on spectrum allocations and spectrum auctions. We enable and are going after at least 10 to 15% of that market to be subleased within our, within our ecosystem, if not 50%. We also see ourselves going in the terrestrial market, so we see this being within the multi-billion dollar range. Okay. Morgan? I'm going to ask the same question. And Tess and I were on the space stage earlier, so thanks for making us feel at home. But um, <laughs> what were you doing before this? Before this, in terms of career-wise, I was managing and I was the director of all data infrastructure and strategy at a multi-billion dollar pension fund. I had previously worked actually with 40 organizations across North America on their data infrastructure, including the company I used to work for that built in the majority of uh, the stock exchanges backend systems. So understanding how stock markets work and the real-time data processing that goes into those stock markets is my, is my edge. And then similarly, I'm also a graduate of the International Space University within space engineering. Preeti? What is your go-to-market plan? So let's say, according to Tess and your grand plan, you become the standard for how this work is done. Are you going to work with the agencies to actually get pushed out to everyone who buys Spectrum, or do you have other plans? Yes, yeah, so we are already today, so because we're a part of the International uh, Telecommunications Union, specifically the Working Party 4A, they're the ones that create all spectrum regulation and spectrum rules and recommendations. So we work within them, and within that, we're on site with basically all of our, our target customers every other month or so right now as we prepare for the World Radio Conference. So we have direct access to be on site with them. We've also been building this with them. So every step of the way, every quarter, we're updating them on our progress, all those operators that I mentioned previously. We've been updating them every step of the way, getting their buy-in, making sure that we're driving value for them. And so that as soon as we are opening up this early adopter program, which we just opened last week, we've already had four sign on to be a part of it, and we're going after the full market. And you talked a little bit earlier on your business models. What do you expect the average contract value to be for your engagements? At this point, we're unable to say that on stage. I'd be happy to say that as an offline conversation, though, to go into the average value of the contracts. We're all friends here. We'll keep it <laughs> Tess, let's go to you. Got really busy. Is Shock up next? Yeah, uh, big guy's coming out next. That makes sense. Hello. Uh, what are the edge corner cases? You mentioned all types of downlink, uplink, intersatellite link any spectrum or, or anything that you either haven't onboarded yet or can't to your exchange? We've tackled the specific spectrum starting with the KA. We've done it by band. Um, so we started with KA and KU because they're most prevalent for communications and for real-time communications within telecommunications, backhaul system, internet. That's where majority of high capacity spectrum is used. So we've been going after that market first and instilling that within the product, running equivalent power flux density calculations, which is the recommended calculation as a part of working within the KA and KU band. We are then also moving into the lower frequency bands, which are used for Earth observation, as we've seen that being a large market as well, especially for the real-time instances of if I take an image of Earth and I need to downlink that image within the next 10 minutes for military or other purposes, I need to know if I have a clear path of communication or if I'm going to be interfered with. Mm -hmm. so that's how we're targeting the market today. Well, thank you very much. we got to leave it there. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> and again, thank you so much for coming out to Startup Battlefield. Disrupt's a huge show, but I know you guys are here for the startups, so please stick around. We have more startups coming up next, including a former basketball player I hear who's going to be talking with an education you. startup. So give our judges a round of applause, stay put, and we'll be right back.